Let's welcome in head coach Mike McCarthy. Good morning, coach. How are you? Uh, good morning, Sean and RJ. I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, good to hear, coach. Uh, let's just get this out of the way uh, so we can move on to more important things. Uh, the big news of the week, obviously, was the player, uh, the, the anonymous source uh, in, in the locker room, uh, you know, kind of, I don't want to say complaining, but criticizing uh, some of the coaching. You know, have you ever thought at any point this year that you were like, in danger of losing the locker room? Uh, not at all. I mean, you know, number one, we're, we're talking about hypotheticals and anonymous and things like that. But it's frankly, I think you have to be in tune where we are in our season. I mean, we no one likes where our record is, you know, most importantly, uh, inside our locker room. And the fact of the matter is anytime you have these kind of moments or these, these, these type of situations, I mean, you may not like the way it happened or how it happened, but it really is an opportunity uh, a teaching moment to say uh, for us as a as a football operations, and and that's exactly what we utilized it for. Yeah, we've all, we've often talked here like this is the big room. I think Parcells called you know being the coach of the Cowboys the big room in the NFL. You got to you know other sports you have that too. Is the microscope here like like kind of bigger than you expected? About the same or any different than it was maybe in Green Bay? Oh I, no, I I think you definitely I, you know I mean, I, I like I like uh, Coach Parcells's you know, on view on it. I mean, I, I think everybody recognizes, you know, that the Dallas Cowboys and the prestige and the and the responsibility uh, that you have uh, being a Dallas Cowboy. And, you know, especially I embrace and understand that in my role as the head coach. Coach, uh, you said something after the game the other day that I thought was interesting, like this is still, or maybe it was in a press conference, that this is still, you know, a process. Do do you think, and you know the NFL, we have no patience. We think every year our team can win the Super Bowl. Do you think maybe we need to take a step back and say, hey, this is a new system. It's a whole new staff, crazy COVID offseason. And maybe did you even have to restress that to your players that this is a process and this is going to take a while and it's not automatically going to all click in the first four weeks? Uh, definitely. I, I think, you know, quoting Coach Parcells again, I mean, you are what your record says you are. So, you know, wherever you think you are in your process, there, you know, there is a measuring stick. And, and, and this is this is where we are. Now, as far as what's in front of us and the opportunities that are presented in front of us, you know, we we don't have to, you know, really fret over uh, what's what's happened in the past. We do, we just got to make sure we learn from it because of, you know, obviously the game we're playing this Sunday, and we all understand what what you know what the division looks like. So, um, I, I I don't really even like to talk about it because I, I think it falls in the category of excuses. Um, uh, no one knows more than I do the challenges that we're that we we face each and every day. Uh, but to sit there and talk about those, it's just really holding back the energy and the focus on what's in front of us, and it's an opportunity. Every time you have an injury, it's it's an opportunity for another player to contribute to the to the commitment and the course of of trying to win a championship. So um, it, it, it's it's a challenge, I and mean, when you have injuries to one position or one segment of your team, it's a bigger challenge. But it's it, it's all part of the grind, and our process and our program. You know, you you want to. You want to build it, um, you know, day by day, uh, but it's not going to last if you don't go through hard moments. I do know that. I mean, because you know, we want to have success. Don't get me wrong, but we want sustained success too, and that's that's a, that's much harder to achieve than just being a one-year wonder. So, um, this is all part of what I feel you need to go through to to build a strong, successful football program. Coach, last thing on it, I was around uh, Brian Billick, who some people said was a player's coach, and then you have other coaches who maybe don't interact as much. What has been your uh, overall philosophy on door open, how much you interact with guys behind the scenes, how often guys come in? Have you kind of been more of a player's coach in terms of those interactions, and and maybe you were a little disappointed that someone didn't just come into the office and sit down with you? Well, the fact of the matter is, you know, let's, it's, it, we're, you know, I, I feel like we're really, really in touch with with our players here. So, as far as comments and opinions of where they come from, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to attempt to regulate that because that's, that's a waste of time. But, you know, in the coaching industry, you kind of, 
you kind of cringe a little bit when I call you a player's coach, you know. But um, I, I think the most important thing you got to recognize uh, a huge part of your execution and development of a football team is, is communication. I mean, it's it's at every level. It's in it's every part of everybody's job. So you have to be open to communication with your players. So, yeah, I, I've. You know, we have uh, growth principles, you know, part of our our coaching philosophy here. And and number three is conflict is good. Uh, You have to be able to have hard conversations and, you know, with 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 everybody, Um, because you you just got to make sure that there's the guidance of what everybody's role and their expectation is. And they they may adjust and, you know, each week based on the, the challenge of the opponent and, you know, or the an injury to another position group. So, yeah, so I. I would like to say that I'm totally open to communication with our players at all times, and because um, you know I'm, I think you have to. I'd rather have those conversations with me than somebody else. So, um, and that's that's the reality. But the position coaches too. I mean, they they have to command and demand in their room, and 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 have the you know they 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 have the most important relationships. You know your your support staff. You know your trainers and strength coaches, your equipment guys. Those, those are critical relationships too because i mean they, they they interact with the players as much or more than anybody in the whole building so i mean all that's part of it but and that's a hell of a long answer to try to get out of the category of being a player's coach but um it's that's kind of where i am so put me in whatever category you think fit well coach we appreciate you answering the questions and all that stuff now let's move on mike mccarthy here on 105 oh, how, we the fan. how tall <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I'm just kidding. No, man. no, coach, coach, coach. I'm I'm trying to emulate you here. Uh, the, I don't know if there's storms in Frisco, but I got I got the lightning that knocked out. I'm doing the show in the dark from my house, so I feel like I'm in the film room with the clicker right now. Uh, really? uh, and so I'm doing the show in the dark right now. So I'm trying to emulate you in the film room. Okay, good. So we get. I mean, you got bad weather out there. Yeah, yeah, we got some lightning, uh, some storms at least here in uh, East Dallas, but hopefully it's all good. I think you guys maybe have a generator or two uh, where, 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 <laughs> I, where, where so. I don't have that. Yeah, the, light, the light's are on, so Coach, that's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, how tough was it to judge Andy Dalton uh, based on the other night with all the offensive line issues, and how much do you have to – do you have to reduce what you guys want to do offensively now because of all the injuries up front? Well, I mean, that's that's part of every game plan. Uh, you know, you, you play to the matchups of of the opponent, and and that's you know obviously that changes when you have injuries. Uh, you know, it's continuity is what we're all trying to achieve uh, as a football team, and you know we you know we have change again in our offensive line so yeah that's definitely going to affect, affect the, the quarterback position on what we will do and what we won't do so i i think there's no question about that did, did you plan with andy in in the game plan you know differently than say you would with a typical backup quarterback you know andy was a starter for like a decade in this league does that give you a little bit more leeway to do more with him <sighs> Oh, absolutely! No, having Andy Dolan's a, is a tremendous, you know, asset for us as a football team. Um, and you know, especially on offense, we when you open up the playbook, I mean, there's there, there's nothing that we would not run with Andy. I mean, it's but you know, you have to you got to take into account where where you are as an offense, uh, the changes that you're having on offense, and, and what gives you the the best chance to to be successful versus our opponent this week in Washington. Coach, we had some injuries in the offensive line. How have you guys shifted the uh, you know the line this week at practice? And what's the injury status of some of the players? Well, I mean, uh, you know, obviously had the, the, the injury at left tackle, so you know we're working a couple guys there, and, and we'll see how that shakes out at the end of the week. So, but uh, you know, the, we're going to stay intact with with um, with the, the four to finish the game. Um, you know, Zach Zach is still on uh, concussion protocol. Coach, how are things looking with uh, Alden Smith? Was he just a little bit nicked up? Do you expect to have Alden on Sunday? Yes, I, I expect to have Alden. Um, you know, he, he he practiced and he's involved in everything, so um, I, I I don't have any indication that he will not go Sunday. Mike McCarthy joining us here, one hundred and five through the fan. Uh, I I don't know. You probably don't follow Twitter during the game. I'm just gonna throw that one out there. Uh, but. I, I, 
<laughs> no. <laughs> uh, there was a lot of get Zeke out of the game, you know, when he was going yeah. through his fumbling issues. What's the conversation on the on the sideline about you know, so when you have a player who's fumbling, like, you know, just sitting them down for a little bit, a series or, or a half, you know, did you think about sitting them longer than you did? Well, I, I think it, it's, you know, that, that's that's a tough question. You know that's a tough decision for for anybody. You know, for for any coach. Uh, you know, when you when you stress ball security and you know the turnover ratio is, is your number one focus of you know what what your football team needs to look like, and you have to have you know zero tolerance or you know level of tolerance for 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 an individual that does that turns the ball over. So um, yeah, that's that's a you know that's a big dis- decision. I think every coach in a game of football has to go to. I, I mean, I've you know, I've been a part of a program where it didn't matter, you know, who, what, where, how, circumstances where the, the, the player sat, and you know, and I've been part of where you continue to try to work through it. So, uh, you know, I, I think you, you you look at every instance, and we we spend a tremendous amount of time on it. Uh, that, frankly, that's my my you know biggest challenge for me because it's uh, you know I'm a huge believer in ROI. I mean, it's when you when you invest time and energy um and you've had success in that particular area and it's it's a number one priority and to be where we are it's it's all obviously of high importance so you know i want to make sure we're using all of our assets and resources to get through it yeah because you know with him I mean, this has never been an issue with him uh and all of a sudden it's just cropped up it's, yeah I mean, and that's part of that goes up to bad luck making, oh, i'm sorry i made to cut you off go ahead yeah like do you chalk that up to like oh man this is just kind of like a phase I mean, is well, he doing something differently? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that's that, to me, that's all part of your evaluation. I mean, past history, you know, looking at, you know, carriages from his past. Um, you know, was this a potential issue in the past that, um, you know, that this he got away with, or you know, so I mean, you look at you look at all those things when you you go into decisions, and and and, and, and frankly, I mean, his history is strong. I mean, he's, uh, you know, he's he's never been, you know, a fumbler. Yeah, so. Uh, we, you know, we're gonna continue to go, and uh, he, you know, he's a huge part of our, you know, our success, and he's a huge part of our plan. Coach, last one for you. Uh, former GM Michael Lombardi keeps insisting that you know Jerry wants Kellen Moore to have all this control, and Mike McCarthy's handcuffed, and he should be calling oh the plays, God. and it's Kellen's world, and Jerry wants that. That's just for the record. You you are deciding that Kellen calls the plays, and you could do that if you wanted, right? That that that's a hundred percent false. I mean, it's it's a you know, I, I, hey, I've been in the league long enough to to understand that when things don't go right, there's there's opportunity to to create um, perception of drama. I mean, I, Kellen Moore was part of my presentation to to Jerry and Stephen on 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 the interview because I mean, it, this was the one opportunity where where I felt it was important based on where Dak was in his career to try to build off build off of the momentum that was created with him in his first four seasons. I mean that that was the goal coming in and I just don't know why I was ever questioned. And trust me, I love calling plays, did it for a long time, but I can't say enough about the job that Kellen's doing and, and just the the way we've put this thing together. But uh He's running it, and, and I'm, I'm in total control of those decisions. Coach, thank you so much. If you uh, find a spare generator laying around there, I, I would appreciate it. Have a great day <laughs> and a great game on Sunday. Thank you, Mike. All righty. Hang in there. Take care.